Mrs. Keys was incredibly abusive. Um, I mean, bat, hammer, broomstick, saucepan, bottle. Um, when the belt didn't, when it wasn't as effective as she wanted, when it didn't make make us scream out enough, she would hold the leather side and beat us with the belt button. It gets worse, um, but it was that kind of environment between eight and twelve. So by nine, I started running away. By ten, I was pretty good. By eleven, I was a professional runner. Um, I could stay on the streets for a week or two at a time. I knew how to sleep behind the, the bleachers in the middle school. How to sneak in and, and you know bomb a bite of uh, a friend's lunch in the cafeteria or go for the garbage and see what they didn't eat. Um, hit the garbage at McDonald's to eat or steal from Farmer Jack's or Kmart. Um, I got good at that too, unfortunately. But I had to eat. So, um, so that's what kind of, she adopted me when I was six. Um, and then, but the, the rough years, the beating started at eight. And I just kept running away, kept running away. And finally they believed me. Um, Child Protective Services, man, they, they dropped the ball probably a dozen times. Neighbors complained, you know, because she would have, as a punishment, she made me walk down the street naked in the rain at nine years old to ask a neighbor for a magazine, a watchtower in a week, ask another Jehovah Witness family. And like the things that this does to a kid, you know what I mean? Like it took a couple of decades to build my self-esteem up and to heal from all that. It was, it was heavy and, and painful. Um, I was so happy, God, that they finally believed me. We're pressing charges, and we're at the courthouse, and she says, if you got the charges, I will relinquish my adoption rights, and you'll never have to see me again. And I said, shit, where do I sign? And so that was it. But the other side of that is that she kept my brother with her, um, my blood brother. And he had been through most of the foster homes with me. Um, but not all of them, but most of them. And he had been adopted with me. Um, so we were split for like 10, 11 years. I didn't see him again until, I don't know, I was 22, 23. So, um, but cut back to uh, the second adoption. You know, it, 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 was, it was wonderful. Um, the family taught me love, taught me how to be a man, um, taught me responsibility. I had an extensive chore list, which I didn't mind because I was with, you know, with a family that wanted me there. So it was amazing. Um, I was happy to cut the grass and rake the leaves and take the trash out and wash the dishes. I was, I was, I was just happy to be wanted. Um, went off to college for social work because I figured, why not? I mean, I've been in group homes, detention centers, foster homes, dealt with child abuse and neglect. And, I figured I could affect some change on the other side, so you know, why not? Um, didn't quite end up using it, because <laughs> uh, when I got out of college, they were probably they were paying social workers. The social workers and teachers are grossly underpaid. Um, it's probably like 32, 35 a year or something, and my first job out of college, I was driving a truck at a moving company. I was like 50, 60K a year. I'm like, I'm staying over here and getting this bread. Um, and right around then, I started recording music. And I was still writing. Um, I wrote my first script probably 2000. Um, I should have tried to push that because it, it was HOJ 2010 was the title. But it was essentially Justice League. But I didn't believe in me. I was scared that they would laugh at me, so I never tried to do anything with it. So they didn't steal it. God gave the idea to somebody else. Same in college with the Bentley SUV. I, I drew the Bentley SUV in college because I saw how big Bentleys were getting. And I'm like, man, okay, this is back during the Ford Excursion, Navigator, Escalade days. The bigger the better. School, drive a school bus if you want to. Um, so I drew it and never told them about it. And God gave that vision to somebody else. And what came out in 2018? The Bentley SUV. So it irritates me a little bit when I see it. That was an expensive lesson. But now when God gives me a vision for something, I trust it and I trust him. And I know that if I put the work in and I inform myself, um, 
so who knows? Like it really could be great. So I, I try to lean into that that faith and optimism. And I'm gonna sneeze. Excuse me. I was trying to hold it as long as I could. <laughs> okay. That's actually good. Uh, where should I back up to? Um, well, I actually wanted to back up to music because for some of your fans, they know you strictly from acting. But mm-hmm. Of course, you were doing music first. So when did you make that transition from music into acting? Um, let me see. I, I always thought it was going to be music first. I thought, you know, I, I wanted to be like a a baby face, and, you know, a crooner, a Brian McKnight, you know, all that. Um, they're icons and my favorite artists, so it's definitely no shame. But I wanted to be something in that vein, and I, I don't know, God was like, yeah, that's cute. Listen, this is what's going to happen. You're going to be over here, and you're going to get this work if you want these blessings. So um, I started doing um, local stage plays and some commercials, and oh two. 2 2002, I auditioned for my first national touring um, stage play, gospel stage play, musical. And I booked it. I was like, ooh, let me get the class. Let me get some acting classes. I don't know what I'm doing. And I don't want to just be up there and hired because of an aesthetic. I want to have some some technique and some foundation behind this and understand what I'm doing and understand how not to just be good at it, but be honest and find the magic and, and be really good if possible. Um, so I did, and the more I studied, the more, you know, opportunities came. I went from that play to another one, to a couple more commercials, um, to a lead in 04, and that's, um, Tyler came, we were here in Atlanta, matter of fact, at the Fox, I believe. Um, he came and saw Not A Day Goes By, and I was the lead in that, and he talked to me out there, he said, I believe you, when you're up there on stage, like, I, I believe that you're the character and not you saying some memorized lines. And I'm like, thank you, because that, that means a lot. And he said, well, I'm shooting Diary of a Mad Black Woman this summer. You know, I'm thinking about a role in there for you. You know, if that's cool. I'm like, absolutely. And he said, I'm taking the vehicle to jail out in 2005, in January. Would you consider? I was like, hell yeah, what you mean would I consider? Let's go. Hell yeah. But hell with seven L's at the end. Hell yeah. Um. And so that's how we started working together. Uh, and, and I learned a lot about, you know, professionalism and structure of production and how to stitch a story together, how to show up and be prepared, um, you know, be punctual. Uh, the consequences if you're not, uh, oh yeah, you can get fired, um, you get to ad living or you don't know your stuff or uh, you late over and over and over, you get fined and then you might, it might be a plane ticket under your door. 